Once upon a time, World vs World roaming was something that many players filled their spare time doing. Roaming guilds were prominent, people used to make outnumbered roaming videos, there were duels, beef, and great theory crafted builds. Fast forward to today, it's quite hard to miss the fact that a lot has changed. Is World vs World roaming dying? Is it still recoverable? What has gone wrong? That is what I'm going to explore in this video. As somebody who has spent a large part of my 11,000 hours of playing Guild Wars 2 as a World vs World roamer, I feel quite opinionated on this topic. And I'll be sharing my own opinion and comparing that with what some other community members think as well. For those unfamiliar with what roaming is, it consists of running solo or in a small havoc group in World vs World to engage in PvP combat or to flip smaller objectives to help your server win the matchup. Why not just go to SPVP you may ask? What has made World vs World roaming stand out for many people, including myself, is the ability to theorycraft much greater than you can in SPVP, whilst simultaneously being able to challenge yourself in outnumbered fights in a free roam environment. You aren't binded to playing any sort of forced objectives. Instead, you have these natural encounters with people who also happen to be running around in World vs World. It's very easy and satisfying to just zone out, play some music, or hang out on Discord with some friends and free roam in World vs World. In earlier times of the game, prior to the implementation of mounts in World vs World, Roaming felt a lot healthier and especially more populated. It was nice because regardless of if you were solo or running in a small group of friends, you felt like you still had an impact. It was a great way to make friends or even make rivals on enemy servers. It gave you a reason to want to play World vs World if running mindlessly in a large zerg wasn't your thing. There was something special about going on YouTube, seeing your favourite player for your class upload an inspiring montage where they display their skills and win great outnumbered roaming fights. It brought many people into World vs World to do the same thing. Fast forward to present day, and the herd mentality of Zerg play has reached an all time high, especially with alliances in play. People often do not want to engage in combat unless they are severely greater than you in numbers. As somebody who has previously led a Zerg guild, I understand the attraction and the sense of community by running in a larger group and having each other there to conquer World vs World with. I'm not here to judge or criticize people who prefer to play in large groups. Over time, in in my opinion, zerging has just become less about outskilling the enemy zerg and much more about who has the bigger group. I mean, dodging isn't even essential in zerg fights these days because of the boon ball meta. This being said, I feel as though many new players come into World vs World and are attracted to playing in a larger group where things are much more forgiving. And instead of primarily relying on their own skill, they have hard carry support players in their squad who are able to keep them alive. Then they go try solo roaming, and of course, because they're so used to having people carry them, they're quickly discouraged because they're dying over and over. A lack of population for people wanting to solo roam is what seems to be a key issue here. With zones like Armistice Bastion or Edge of the Mists, a lot of people see no need to bother going into the Borderlands where they'll just be zerged down by a larger group. Where along the years have things gone wrong though? Genuinely, it's really hard to say. Is it the addition of mounts? Poor balance and power crept elite specs? Lack of rewards for roaming? In my opinion, probably a combination of all these things. Let's begin with mounts in World vs World. In my opinion, a blessing and a curse. On one hand, they add a lot of convenience and save people having to slowly run across a large map to get to their zergs. You see, they promote the idea that people can move around the map quicker and find fights faster, which you'd think would be good. But on the contrary, that exact access to speed often works against roamers. You can be fighting someone 1v1 and within seconds people are running over with their mounts and suddenly you are severely outnumbered. Let's say you happen to stay alive and you're running away trying to kite them out. Whilst people chase and keep you in combat, others can hang back, mount up and chase you down, essentially making it impossible to escape unless you have multiple teleports, movement skills or stealth. And then we wonder why World vs World roaming is plagued with thief players, which a lot of people dislike. You could be taking North Camp and continuously killing enemy players who are trying to defend it. However, with Citadel Waypoint so close, they can just keep respawning and running back within seconds on their mounts, till eventually you and your friends are out of gas and lose. Not because they're better than you, just because they can keep dying and re-entering the fight over and over. 
The clip you're seeing on the screen is a prime example of that. Mounts just further add to the strength in numbers issue in World vs World, giving Zerg players mobility even though their builds aren't designed for that. Before mounts were implemented, Havoc groups were able to chip away at Zergs and kill people who were falling behind. Zerg players typically had slower builds and would have to actually strategize and work together to get rid of these Havoc groups and protect their players. This no longer exists. Roaming groups now have no chance against bigger zergs in today's game. Let's move on to balance issues. This is a controversial topic. I suppose now is a great time to open this discussion as Celestial Gear is being nerfed in World vs World very soon. Some fight in favour of Celestial Gear, others despise it. Although I lean in favour of nerfing Celestial Gear, I understand why people would run it. In a land of being outnumbered and dealing with builds that are designed to gimmick and one-shot you, people do need to try and find alternative ways to deal with such circumstances. However, let's move away from talking about gear specifically, but instead the classes and builds in World vs World. It's hard to ignore the fact that elite specializations and the addition of new weapons through expansions have incredibly added an issue of power creep. First, we gained access to new powerful elite specializations, which was awesome because they were fresh new classes. Then, after three new elite specializations for each class with new mechanics, we then got the weapon mastery, which gave us the ability to run whatever weapons we wanted across all elite specializations. As if that wasn't enough, relics got introduced, which meant you can run any stat combo you want through gear and runes and choose whatever additional bonuses you want through your relic. This customizability seems incredible, but what it's resulted in is just ridiculous power creep. Every class can have mobility now, every class can have access to big damage, every class can have access to loads of cleanse, every class can run a tanky, unkillable build. With this sort of power creep, you no longer have to focus your build to specialize in one thing, everybody can just do everything, now making it even more difficult to fight outnumbered because enemies just have so many tools. Then we move on to rewards, or the lack of rewards should we say. Running in a large zerg just means you can farm rewards quicker. So why bother running in a small group if you aren't going to get anything for it? This issue has always existed in roaming, so this is nothing new. However, over the years as the population of roamers has declined, it hasn't given any new players a reason to begin roaming. So looking into the future, I think it's crucial we discuss solutions. Roaming is truly on its last leg in my opinion, and it's bleeding out fast. If nothing is done about it, I believe World vs World will be nothing but Zergs. Of course, so far I've only given my opinions on the current state of the game, so I decided I would go to my Discord and ask other roamers for their opinions. I got four responses. It shows how many roamers are actually left who give a shit. <laughs> I asked five questions. Do you think World vs World solo and small group roaming is currently in a good place? What are the contributing factors to your answer? What can be done to improve roaming? Have a alliances positively or negatively impacted roaming and do you think a new season of make roaming great again will be a positive impact let's look at some of their responses let's start with the first question baron has said in terms of balance it isn't the worst i've seen i feel like willbender is very strong but it's okay in terms of balance for me for me personally i don't know if i can say that i completely agree with baron balance is on its way to getting better with the celestial nerf but it is still very very power crept and as i spoke about earlier i feel like every build just has everything silver said solo roaming is in a bad state i think that small scale is relatively healthy with a few minor issues wrecked you said solo roaming is kind of dead unless you play the broken stuff small scale is fine if you can find other groups i think both of these players sort of have the same idea and this is sort of what i'm agreeing with the most solo roaming is just honestly hell small scale is in a decent place and that's what me and my guildies have been doing mostly is just running as a small group because like i said you just need more people now to do stuff running solo is only just going to get you outnumbered and zerg down most of the time especially if you're playing a build without very high mobility felraz one of my guildies has said absolutely not not even close to good. The lack of a healthy World vs World population and Anet not nerfing boon balls incentivizes new and casual players to follow the herd and zerg. That's pretty spot on if you ask me personally. He continued to say, no roamers equals boring gameplay. Anecdotally, if I don't find anyone running around for 10 minutes, I won't show up to try again in a long time. So let's move on to question two, where I asked people to explain why they gave that answer. Silver says that for small group roaming, a lot of builds are just able to out of combat way too easily. He also says the amount of effectiveness of supports is too large. 
I really, really agree with this. Supports can just honestly carry people. They're able to res people fast. It's just, a lot of the times you're struggling to actually kill someone. He says, solo roaming's main issue is actually the community. Too many people don't want to fight or they'll engage you and out of combat when they're low or they'll only fight you when they're outnumbering you. This goes into what I was talking about earlier. Rectu says, first reason the roaming community is now only clouding on EB and BMing every single soul they can put in downstate with five other players. Not very fun gamers. This I cannot agree with more. The community has become so toxic that even when people are heavily outnumbering or zerging you, you still cop bad manners for some reason it's like man i'm here fending for myself what reason do you have to bm me small scale players can't do much versus big zergs anymore so you kind of have to find a guild to bully for the whole week if not then it's gg he says the bls are super dead you have to force people to come out and fight. This is so true because when you go into World vs World, it's naturally a PvP based game mode. And when you're having to force people to actually fight you in a PvP based game mode, it's like, what is the point? I understand people want rewards, but like, honestly, let's be real. At the end of the week, all those structures and the points gained and stuff like that for your server, they're really meaningless. Maybe you get an extra pip the next week. Come on guys, get your balls and get out and fight. Rectu says, the meta was and will be trash. We're getting Selly nerfs, great. Now Daredevil, Deadeye, Willbender, Connie Druid are still OP and Selly was holding them down. So I'm a bit scared for the next meta. Kind of underrated opinion here, but I sort of agree with it. Now onto question three, what can be done to improve roaming? Felraz starts with, bring structured stats to World vs World, exactly like SPVP. Bring everyone on the same playing field. Eh, I don't know if I agree with this one, only because like I said, what incentivizes people to roam in the first place is being able to customize their builds way greater than SPVP. He then says, increase participation and rewards across the board. This I agree with. Release actual content to increase player base. I strongly agree with this. World vs World is so due for something new. Didn't even mean to rhyme there. Make Bloodlust Ruins and EOTM impact the matchup more. They're currently completely dead. This I have been saying for a long time. Give roamers a reason to actually go into the Bloodlust Ruins because it's a great area and it has great terrain for roaming. Alternatively, like you said, Edge of the Mist is such a underutilized map aside from the arena for big, you know, GVGs and Zerg fights. The whole Edge of the Mist map is just completely dead. Give us a reason to go out there. Either that or repurpose the map. Bring back elite specializations included in expansions. Although I've been speaking of power creep, I think I do slightly agree on this because when a new expansion drops, a lot of people aren't really going around roaming that much because all we've got is like a new weapon or something along those lines. And then finally, he says balance appropriately, prioritizing class identity and fun, no more jack of all trades, power crept specs. I agree. It seems like everyone pretty much agreed on balance changes, but here are some of the interesting ones. Baron says it would be interesting to have a discussion about map design to encourage better spots on maps to generate roaming encounters. Rectu went into more depth regarding this. He said, I'd love to see a map dedicated to roamers where you force people to split on the map by making Lord rooms kind of instanced where only a few people can get in and work like a mini deathmatch to capture the objective. Now, the fourth question was regarding alliances and how it affected roaming. Silver says, alliances have been mostly entirely negative, both because of bugs, people not being placed properly, or because it completely killed the roaming scene. Too many people not wanting to fight, just logging in to go to tag. Rectu says, I think it killed solo roaming, but made small scale a tiny bit better. Especially early alliance beta, I saw many small scale guilds trying to roam. I don't see many of them anymore though. Alliances made World vs World 95% zerging. Roaming is super non-newbie friendly, while zerging is easy to learn and less frustrating so new players don't roam and old players uninstall. I agree with these two answers. Alliances has just made zerging that much more popular and oh my god it is so frustrating just going out there and just constantly getting zerged. Constantly getting zerged. Don't these people have better things to do than chase down a couple players with 40 people? On the other hand, Felraz says that it's been positive. Best example being that people from all different servers can now play together without spending money. This, I agree on. It is nice being able to constantly get on the same server as your friends without having to swipe your card. The last question was pretty much just one for me. I wanted to know, will another season of Make Roaming Great Again, my personal community tournament, will that be positive for the roaming community, do people think that it will help bring players back in 
to Wordpress World as roamers? And this is a question that I need you guys to answer as well in the comments. In the past, with previous seasons, I felt like I made a big impact with Make Roaming Great Again. However, in the last season, it felt like a lot of people didn't participate as they felt like they didn't have a chance at winning. Let's see the answers. Baron says, yes, I think so. I like the builds and it has a broader appeal to the average player. Felraz says, community driven tournaments is an absolute positive. Any type of media or attention this game gets will be impactful. Silver says, at the moment, no. I think if the roaming scene ever becomes a bit healthier or balance improves and makes roaming videos more entertaining, MRGA would be positive. And then finally, Rectu says, you need to change the formula in my opinion, because right now, only a few classes would be able to perform in outnumbered roaming. And let's be honest, we're not here to watch duels. I'd love to see 5v5 events, especially with Seller getting nerfed. I agree with points that everyone has made here. Like Rectu said, because of how power crept the game is right now, doing outnumbered fights is only really gonna work on a very select few builds that are just busted right now. Make Roaming Great Again was designed around all the different classes and all the different variety of builds and how cool they were. But as Felraz and Baron both said, any sort of attention this game gets is going to be impactful. And let's be honest, right now, it really needs it. All right, guys, it's been a while since I've done a rant sort of, you know, opinion-based video like this, but let me know what you think in the comments. I always like seeing the feedback people give and the different opinions that people have. Remember, everything is the personal opinions of those who contributed in this video as well as myself. So if you disagree, let us know why. There's no need to get butthurt about it. But I think this is quite a common opinion right now amongst the roaming players in the game. Please leave a like on the video subscribe to the channel and share it amongst the community because the more shares we get guys remember it might reach the ears of someone at ArenaNet. There has been opinion-based videos I've made in the past where I felt like some form of the feedback has been taken on from ANET and some changes have been made. For example, the Celestial Nerfs. Alright guys, thank you for watching the video and I'll speak to you soon. Peace out.